The moon was man's first outpost, a first footstep in space. From the moon, we were able to look back at Earth and see ourselves. See ourselves from a different perspective, a sight that revealed a profound truth. The heavens are part of man's world. From this moment forward, the curve of evolution was bent. The perilous voyage into space was a challenge we were willing to accept and unwilling to postpone. The future of our species was now as much in space as it was on Earth. 44 years later, we're approaching the dawn of a new era. One that is characterized not by rovers and probes, visits or short stays, but by permanence. Mars. From now on, we won't just be visiting planets. We'll be staying. be staying in our pursuit to find life elsewhere in the universe a search for life on Mars begins on Earth Mars One is a foundation. Uh, it was founded two years ago by Bas Lansorp and uh, Arno Wilders. And uh, today we have a team of 10 people and we have uh, advisors and ambassadors from all over the world. Uh, Mars One, as you can understand, uh, wants to send people on Mar to Mars in 2023 on a one-way trip to Mars. And why is that? It seems crazy, but why is that? Uh, well, research and exploration were, uh, are innate in the, in the human species. Um, Mars One responds to this uh, everlasting need to study everything that surrounds us. And um, the same need that back in the centuries uh, drove people to uh, explore new territories, meet new cultures. In the, the 19th century, uh, millions, um, more than 10 million people left Europe uh, to find a better place where to live. They didn't know what to expect, but they were pretty sure they would have left everything behind and, and they would never be able to come back to their families. And the same uh, situation, likewise, on Mars, people will never be able to come back to Earth because the technology to come back does not exist. And, um, and after a few years, people on Mars will not be able to stand the higher gravity on Earth because due to uh, a bond, uh, decreasing of the bond mass. But, um, however, um, unlike the first immigrants, uh, people on Mars will have the chance to communicate to their parents and with their families uh, because uh, internet will be available and they will, for example, uh, be able to send messages or, um, for example, use WhatsApp just to make some examples or send a video message very easily. But what is really nice and amazing about this project is that for the first time, we will uh, not just be visiting planets, as we said, but we will settle on new planets. And why Mars and not another planet or the Moon? Because Mars, one, Mars is the most similar, the planet is most similar to Earth, because the duration of the day is almost uh, as a, a day on Earth. And, uh, for example, there is water in the soil, there is hydrogen that, that can be filtered, and um, there is almost the same walking surface because even if Mars is smaller, um, there's no, there are no oceans there. And we are not interested in purchase or in um, um, developing technology in-house, but 
just to uh, purchase them from uh, aerospace suppliers from other world. And the technology to do that, to send people to Mars, already exists. Uh, so we have the rocket technology to go to Mars, to send people to Mars. We have the technology to land on Mars. We have the technology to survive in, uh, in harsh conditions, because in one case is the space station. Um, they, uh, there are astronauts that have been living there for more than 11 years without any problems. And we have the robotic technology uh, to prepare the settlement for um, to prepare the settlement for the human arrival. But how does the mission look like? Um, first of all, um, in 2016, we will send um, a demonstration mission to Mars that will demonstrate will, a lander that will demonstrate the technology that we need to land on Mars. And uh, we will use it at other times to, um, to, see, uh, to, um, to try the technology and to send the equipment to Mars. And we, at the end, we will have a better track, or, track record than on the moon. Then in 2018, we will send a rover that will drive around the surface to, try and, to find the best spot where to place the settlement and where there is enough water in the soil. And in 2020, we will send six cargo mission, a second supply unit, um, two living unit and two uh, life support systems, and the second rover. The rover uh, will basically um, deploy the solar panels out of the uh, life support system and extract the inflatable section of the living units and uh, then the rover will scoop wet sand uh, to, into the life support system to produce water and uh, the hydrogen will be filtered and oxygen will be made by, uh, from the water. And at the end, in, uh, uh, of course, if everything is ready and we will try to figure out if everything is ready and uh, prepared for us in the humans, then we will send the first crew of uh, four humans to Mars. And the humans there will have to finalize the building. They will have to do some construction. And, um, and then after two years, we will send other, uh, every two years, we will send a new crew with other four people. Um, yeah, but. The first mission is really, well, how much does it cost? Um, well, the first mission costs around $6 billion, and the following mission, $4 billion each. So it's quite a lot of money. But how well can, can we finance this? Um, our idea is, um, well, if we consider that in 2023, four billion people will be able to access television and internet. And if we will broadcast this event, it will be for sure the most watched media event ever. And um, this is just comparable to the Olympic Games. In the Olympic Games, um, earned in just three weeks, three billion dollars, three billion dollars, uh, for uh, just with just broadcasting, advertising, and licensing. This would be this is what I like about this project is that it's, it's really global. Everyone can take part in this mission, and it's something inspired that can give us an alternative, an inspiring alternative to economic crisis and other problems that afflict our, the world we live on, and. Everyone can take part in this mission, as I said. Every nationality, man or woman, young or old, or well-read or, or undedicated, it doesn't matter. Everyone can take part in this mission. And, um, and for example, uh, when we started two years ago, um, there, was, there were already, we received something like uh, thousands of emails of people from, from more than 100 countries uh, of people saying, please, let me go to Mars, let me go to Mars. And I know that sounds crazy, but it, it was so inspiring that a lot of people um, decided also to make the change, some changes in their lives.
For example, some of them started losing weight or, I don't know, um, for example, they started to study again. Uh, it, it was incredible. And um, what is really, now, now we have uh, finally started the, the selection process and we, have, uh, we are at around one of the selection program. And uh, we have uh, this website. Basically, now the, um, the applicants have to send an online, uh, fill in a, an online application form, and they have to write a letter, a motivation letter, and um, and then they have to make a video, uh, an application video, where they are, they are asked to answer three questions: Why would you like to go to Mars? Describe your sense of humor, and uh, why would you be the perfect candidate for this mission? And right now, well, we received something like we have uh, 100,000 registration in just one month. And some of them uh, already applied, uh, already submitted their application. Uh, some others still are still working on the application and some others decide not to proceed. But what really matters is that all the people who applied are really, really motivated. And, and it's, it's incredible how creative they can be because they try to figure out how to describe or how to present themselves, how to describe who they are and uh, what they are good at. And for example, these are uh, some examples of candidates with the application that we, ha we received. We have received, for example, an application from an American uh, guy who pretended to be in a spaceship talking to a computer. <laughs> Or, um, for example, we received also another application of uh, another American guy who said, um, who, to describe his sense of humor, he made up a kind of a comedy sketch uh, based on a misunderstanding of the mission. Um, we received an application from a 63 years old um, Dutch guy, uh, Dutch man. <laughs> Uh, who's, uh, um, who basically defined um, the Mars One mission, the best seal he ever found in, in the internet. And we have also our first Moldovan uh, applicant. And, um, well, this guy is, uh, is now, lives now in the US, but uh, what he says is that he likes, he explored all the oceans, so he's really, he likes to do it. And, but what it means is that is to explore the, the space and it really is really motivated to go to Mars. Um, as I said, this is just uh, the first round of the selection program and uh, at the end of August, we will, the committee will select uh, the candidates for the second round. The second round, uh, now what we are, we are evaluate, the criteria that we are uh, evaluating are basically the motivation and, uh, um, yeah, and the, the, the channel, this, let's say, the personal traits. And um, in, the, in the second round, it would be really important to, uh, to show the, or te to demonstrate that they are, healthy, they are healthy because health is really important at this stage and they will have to get a medical statement of good health. And, uh, and then um, a committee will, the, the candidate will have the chance to meet their, uh, uh, the, the Mars One committee in the region. In the third or fourth round, everything will be broadcasted and there will be, um, the third round it will be the national uh, round where people will have uh, the chance to um, participate in challenges to show they are suitable to go to Mars. And the winner, every, um, the people, the audience, will have the chance to select uh, the winner for each country. And Mars One will also, the Mars One committee will select uh, additional uh, candidates for the fourth round. The fourth round, we will uh, create a real a copy of a Mars outpost where uh, we will create form a group of uh, four people six, and, uh, and they will have to basically um, try to um, 
um, face challenges and uh, live uh, w work as a team in harsh condition in uh, difficult circumstances and um, and we will select there six uh, groups of four people each um, but what is not clear what they're going to do on Mars they're going just to settle there or or something else um, well they have also um, the task to study the planet. And what is really interesting about that is that, they will, that there are new, no, no human ever, ever been to Mars. So it would be uh, really interesting to um, learn a little bit more about the planet. If there is life uh, everywhere on Mars. Uh, this is a, a picture taken by uh, NASA in 2008, it's really old. Uh, but, um, yeah, there seems to be a mermaid on the rocks, but of course it's not, uh, it's uh, just a rock formation. But just to uh, tell that it's really important at uh, this stage to understand or to figure out if there is life on Mars and uh, there was life on Mars. We, know, we don't know that and we don't have any uh, way to, to find it out. Um, the other thing that we, I think is really interesting is that they will have the chance um, after so many years to start a society anew. And, um, and basically they, they will have the chance to set their own uh, rules and uh, decide whatever they want to live, how they want to live. And, and our ultimate dream would be to, uh, for them to be independent, completely independent from Earth. Uh, of course, it will take uh, many years, probably, but this is our, our real dream, to uh, start settling on a new planet. Um, well, thank you for listening. Uh, if you are uh, inspired enough uh, to apply to, <laughs> to go to Mars yourself, you can uh, go to apply.mars-1.com. Thank you.